What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 7 of NHL 22 Arizona Coyotes Franchise Mode Series. You can see there, Crosby Stills are retired and he's tearing it up in the preseason. 14 points in 6 games. I'm going to show you guys the Stanley Cup winner from last year. It wasn't us, it was the Edmonton Oilers, but we actually lost the Oilers in Game 7 overtime of the Conference Finals. So, you know, we almost made it back there. I'm really hoping we can win at least one more Stanley Cup since I didn't get to watch the celebration for our first one. And as always guys, we wouldn't mind leaving a quick thumbs up on this video. It really helps me out. I'm going to show you guys the lines here heading into this year. I'm really happy with them, honestly. So we got Matthews, Crosby, and Funk on the first line. Crosby's only an 83 now. He's 40 years old, but getting a plus 5, he's like an 88. His hands are still perfect. Solid shot. Good awareness there. He's going to be fine. Right Geeky Gunther on the second line also gets a plus 5. We got Demarchi, Carlson, and Keller on the third line. And then Felino, Bergeron, Holloway on the fourth. Bruce on there is 42, now is 79, but all those X-Factors, still pretty good stats outside of skating and physical, so he'll be all right. Defensively here, we have Klinge and Valimaki top pair, Soderstrom, Chicker in second, and then we have Dunning Grizzly on the bottom pair. In terms of the goaltending, Andre there starting, 91 overall, Allen fell back in him up. Special teams here, plus five on the first four man, plus five on the first power play, plus a plus three on the second. We've actually got Crosby something in that now, and then Funk and Gunther on the point here, no D-man. But these two power play lineups give us the best chemistry, so figured why not. Plus two on each PK there, and then three man two zero. So honestly, it looks really good overall. AHL here you can see Gunler, Zeri, Martinez on the first line. Martinez there's the guy with the perfect shot. Plus two on the second line. Uh, third line's not too bad. Fourth line's lower rated to get a plus one. Defensively, two 80s on the top pair. I mean, AHL team's looking pretty good. You got an 80 overall, Nico Dawes starting. Savage here's got melee potential at 18 as a goaltender, already 71 overall. So both teams look pretty solid. Capacity hasn't changed for NHL. We still have Matthews wearing the C, Crosby Bergeron wearing the two A's. So we'll take a look at the ratings here, guys, before we start this sim. As you can see here, we've got 97 offense, 96 defense, and 90 goaltending. So pretty good looking team. Let's get started. And real quick, guys, I want to thank Bounty Sports for sponsoring today's video. If you still haven't heard me talk about them yet, they're a new daily fantasy sports platform that's switching things up with a simple and easy to use pick em style opposed to the regular fantasy sports lineup. I find their methods a lot of fun and honestly, easier to win as well. Now, signing up is super easy. Honestly, it takes like 10 seconds. If you use my code TACTICS, you can get $5 for free, no deposit necessary. So without spending anything, you can already start to win real cash prizes. Now, once you guys have your free $5, you're going to want to choose a contest to enter. I should also mention, too, that Bounty has a mobile app, but this is a lot easier to record on PC, so click on contest here, you guys can see variety of sports. Obviously though, we're going with NHL here. I'm just going to go, I think, with the $4 one, 30 entries, you can see a little variety of different contests. I usually go with like the lower ones, the big payouts, but basically guys, the favorite always gives you one point and the underdog will give you more than one based on, you know, how much of an underdog they are. Kind of want to be strategic here about who you're picking. I'm going to take Vegas against Bruins. I feel like that's pretty 50-50, I'm getting good odds. I'm definitely taking Pittsburgh at home against Montreal, like half their teams out. Basically an AHL team. I'm taking Tampa Bay at home against LA. Devils Flyers. Flyers haven't been playing too well, so I'm going to take the Devils there. Islanders Detroit. I'm going to take my team, of course, Detroit at home. Carolina Minnesota. That's another pretty 50-50 game. I'm going to take the Hurricanes there. Uh, Flames Preds. I'm going to take the Flames away. Buffalo Winnipeg. you got to go to the Jets at home. Again, Blue Stars. I think Blues are the better team. They're away, but I'm going to take them. Toronto Edmonton. That's another 50-50. I'm taking McDavid and Dreisel at home. Rangers Avalanche is a tough one. Avalanche are a good team, but you're getting like 2-1 to one almost on the Rangers. I'm going to take that. They're playing well. Now Columbus, Vancouver. Vancouver's 4-0 under Boudreaux. Can they make it 5-0? I think they do. I'm going to take the Canucks there. And finally, Kraken at Sharks. This is another pretty 50-50 game. I'm going to take the Sharks. Though. So you guys can see there my max points is 15.18. I'm going to enroll in this contest. $4 confirmed. So if this sounds like something you guys would be interested in, click the link in the description box below and use my code TACTICS for free $5. Again, no deposit necessary. Highly recommend giving Bounty Sports a try. Now, guys, let's get back to the video. Now, Carolina just offered us a staring in here for Vossner, Kilger, and Brimenas. Three good prospects. We got a top six forward, top four defenseman, and a starting goalie. Uh, Lestarin, one year left, only 83. Okay, yeah, definitely not worth it. And at the end of the here, guys, we have a really solid record, 22-10-1. So our best start in a while. Matthews, 48 points in 33 games. That is awesome. We're actually second in the division, though, behind the Wild. They have 46. Hopefully we can keep this going. The St. Louis Blues just offered us Troy, Terry, and Sorella for our second-round pick. That's Columbus's pick. And Vossenar, how good is Troy Terry right now? $5 million in 86. He's got 28 points in 45 games, but that's only with nine and a half minutes of ice time. I don't know why they're not playing him. Good hands and everything. 
Vossenar here. Only 20 years old, already a 72. He's got medium top six. He's not really playing much for an AHL team. He does have 11 goals, though. This honestly is a pretty fair offer. Sorrell is an 82. Now, I'm going to say no, guys. Reason being, we'd have to drop Carlson, Gunther, Demarchi to the fourth line. Crosby, even though he's 82, isn't a fourth line player. Dude's got 49 points over point per game right now. Just doesn't make sense. Plus, we're playing well, so why mess it up? And now, the Winnipeg Jets want to go is Josh Morrissey, two fourths for Vossenar in a couple picks. Defense, we're okay. Morrissey, 84 overall, 4 goals, 11 assists. Uh, he would definitely help out the bottom pair if nothing else. Fits on all D pairings, all power play lines. He is a rental though. Maybe we'll send back Grizzlick since Evans and Kuliachonik are both coming up. 80 overall, they can probably replace him. And I think we're going to have to make them retain 50% of Morrissey. But honestly, this just makes our defense a lot better. I don't think Grizzlick either. Just playing any special teams or anything like that. And now in adding Grizz, like I'm going to get rid of our fourth as well as their two fourths. I feel like one of their fourths and our fourths is just kind of redundant. Now Brower, 23-77. He's not too bad. He's just got weird stats. Like really high offense awareness, but he's a defensive defenseman. So it doesn't really help him. And then his defense awareness isn't the best. Vossenar here could be a player. Probably better chance than Brower who... Signed that offer sheet, which I'm still annoyed by. So let's try Brower and Grizzlick for Morrissey at 50%. And the Jets say yes. I think that's a good trade for us. And so after the trade, guys, team looking the same. But obviously got Morrissey on the bottom pair now with Dunn. I've also got him playing the three-man penalty kill. I think he gives Valmaki a break there. And then in terms of the AHL defense, as we lost Brower, we now have Kildred playing. Sitting on overall, medium top four. So it'd be good for him to get some ice time. And I think the chemistry actually got better. And so now the trade deadline here, guys. A record of 41, 18, and 3. First place in the division. 85 points to the deadline. That's not bad at all. Matthews there has got 75 and 62. We're behind the Lightning. And we're tied with the Sharks. So we have a chance still at the President's Trophy. Uh, we'll get to this deadline here. Really, the team's looking awesome. Um, I think we're going to make a good trade if one's available. We're not going to probably force a trade. As we do have picks and prospects, but more excited would be pretty nasty to get. Same with Rowenski, O'Reilly even. Pretty low value now at 90 overall. O'Reilly would be pretty nasty. You have him, Crosby, Bergeron, three veterans. Uh, Riley there, Tara Vinen, Duclair, Meyer, uh, Pugliarvi. I feel like they're pretty low value, but that's just because Penny and free agents. Glass, Bertuzzi. I would love to get Ryan O'Reilly. If we had him and Bergeron, I don't know how anyone you know, beats us on the PK. All right, guys, so here's my offer for Ryan O'Reilly at 50%. I really think he's a difference maker. Let's look at the D awareness, face-offs. I mean, are you kidding me? This guy does it all. And he's still crazy high rate at 90. Offering up Felino just because he's basically taking over that spot. First round pick this year, plus Schroeder. Decent prospect, 1962, medium top six. We'll see what the Blues say to this one. Trades accepted. Let's go. I think that is a huge trade for us. And right here, guys, we got the Buffalo Sabres offering us Kevin Hayes for Picard and a fourth. I don't think that's how you say it, but kind of sounds like Star Trek, so why not? Um, he's decent. Hayes is an 84. <laughs> Hayes is pretty good. Wow. Um, that's why they want a medium top six back. Do we want to go medium top six for Hayes? Probably not, but if we're going all in here. I'd definitely give up a second. Uh, Tempe should be good. We should be good too though. Let's win on ourselves. Let's go all in. Our second and a fourth for Hayes. Trades rejected. They want a little bit more. I mean, we have four fourths. I can give another fourth as well. There we go. So around the end of the trade deadline here, guys, the Kevin Hayes trade was the last one of the day. Sorella there goes to the Senators. Nicholas Bodwin to the Canucks. Got Andre Barakowski there to the Flyers. Our trade for Ryan O'Reilly. To Foley to the Flyers. Troy Terry to Boston. Obviously turned down that trade earlier in the year. Rowan Yossi goes to Philly. The Islanders get Alex Ovechkin. Are you kidding me? Why would Washington trade him? They also go to third and Severson for Klingberg. Tierney in a fifth. Sand in there to Carolina. Teravina the Islanders as well. Oh my goodness. New York Islanders going all in. They get up Samson off for Teravina. I just realized on the pop up there. And O'Reilly's got 76 points right now in 61 games. Which actually makes him our scoring leader. That's ridiculous. And this sucks, guys. After training for Kevin Hayes, they put him in the AHL, and it won't let me call him up as it says I'll be over the salary cap, even though he's making 1.7, and it shows our cap space there. 1.4 after we call him up. Uh, before we call him up, it's actually like 2.5. So uh, another time when just, I don't know what's going on with the game, like 2.6 million in cap space, 1.7 million salary. How can we not call him up, right? So kind of sucks. I even thought about maybe signing down DeMarchi just because of the same rating, but Hayes, of course, the veteran, plus DeMarchi, in the box a lot, 108 penalty minutes, even though he's got 86 discipline, 87 aggressiveness isn't that high, like I really don't get why he's in the box so, so much, but even that won't let me do it, so just a weird thing, and 
But basically, we lost a second round pick there for nothing, but we could resign Hayes, so that's the, you know, the one saving grace. And here's an update look at the lines, guys. Even though Kevin Hayes, they're pretty nasty. Had to switch them up a bit, and I really like them. So we got Matthews, Crosby, Funk on the first line, get a plus five. Wright, O'Reilly, Kelly on the second, get a plus three. Carlson, Geeky, Gunther on the third, get a plus two. Demarchi, Bergeron, Holloway on the fourth line. Demarchi, there, 108 penalty minutes. I don't mind him playing a little bit less. Hopefully, we're on the PK less. Uh, I think the defense there, the exact same top six. In terms of the special teams, we actually get plus five on both power planes now. So, uh, that's ridiculous. Only one defenseman on a power plane, Chikrin. But, uh, still looks pretty good. In fact, Bergeron, O'Reilly, either of them can take the face-offs. Even Crosby has pretty crazy face-offs, I think. Yeah, 88 isn't bad at all. Four men in there, plus five and plus two. The PK is a plus three and a plus two. Again, O'Reilly and Bergeron. We should be winning like every draw on the PK. Three men in here, Crosby and O'Reilly. Surprisingly, Crosby gets, you know, no chemistry boost. Bergeron gets a minus one. Even Connor Geeky, who's actually got pretty solid defensive stats, he also gets a minus, or he gets a minus two. So, kind of sucks we're forced to play Crosby here. As endurance is pretty low there, 81. He's out on, I think, every single special team, plus the first line forwards. But... If this is the year he retires, why not have him play the most hockey he possibly can? So, team looks really, really good. I am actually curious if our ratings have gone even higher, because obviously bringing in O'Reilly, I don't really see how they could go lower. Defense is probably a lot higher, too, with how good his stats are. Look at that. Yeah, 98, 97, 90. Just insane. And so, seeing this season now, guys, we have a record of 52, 26, and 4, so good for 108 points. Not sure that's good enough for the President's Trophy. We actually tied the Blackhawks for the division, but we got the tiebreaker of more wins. Matthews, 96 points, 82 games, not bad. Wow. Lightning won 19, Canadians won 13. That's pretty crazy. Uh, still, though, finished third in the entire NHL. Let's see what everyone else did here. I assume, you know, some pretty good seasons from the guys. O'Reilly had 94, and he actually played one last game through the trade. Wright, 88. Crosby, 81. So, still a point per game at 40 is insane. Keller, 74. He didn't even get that much minutes. Like, he averaged 14 minutes of ice time there, playing between second and third line. Very, very good season from him. I just realized he's going to need a new contract, so he wants a raise. Funk, 62. Gunther, 54 isn't bad. Same with Geeky. Chikrin, 53. Pretty happy with that for a D-man. Take a look at the goaltending stats here. Ottinger, 0.919 and 2.51. Those are pretty solid as well. AHL team here. Lowry at 98 points. Okay. 21 years old. He's dropped to low top six. Um, this makes no sense. He had 73 points his first year in the AHL. 55-49. Just put up 100, and his potential has gone down. I think, has his rating gone down as well? I don't know. Such a weird, like, guy. Such a weird prospect. Nybeck here put up 95. We drafted him because he went off in the AHL last year. Rate 88. Did even better this season. So, AHL All-Star there. Zeri 88 is really solid. McConnell Barker 85. Gunler 75. So, uh, some pretty solid players in the AHL. Evans had 59. 80 overall, he's dropped to low top six. I could see him getting up to like an 81 though. That would definitely help us out. Um, in terms of the goaltending here, Nico Dawes, 0.915 and a 2.18. 56, 8, and 4. We've got to check out the AHL standings because uh, his record there is absolutely nuts. So entire league, who was leading scorer? Connor Bedard, 121 points. As I'm recording those World Juniors apparently are canceled. So it really sucks to hear that. He's actually up to high franchise potential. Look at his shot there. So I think the rating potential I gave Bedard seems to have worked because he's nuts. Marco Rossi, 118 up to a 90. Kaprizov on his line. They both went off. Uh, Beneers there playing really good for Seattle. Defensively here, Heiskin at 81 points. Gerard on Montreal. That's kind of cool because I believe he is from Quebec. Fox as well at 80, so they're both one point behind. Quinn Hughes signed with the Sharks. Can I see how much he's making? 18-5. Put up 79 points. Ridiculous. Uh, rookie skaters here. Demarchi was actually third in scoring at 42 points. That's not too bad. And then goalies here, who's got the best? Oh, Andre Vasilevsky, most wins. Might have the best save percentage. Or actually, it's under 0.919. Leonard actually 41 games played. He's probably going to have it. And then goals against here. Andre's third. And he's actually the best, though, for starters. So I feel like Andre has an outside chance at a Vesna. Now, in terms of the league, I think we are third place when I looked. And yeah, our third place there. 10 Montreal, really nice. Luckily, they're both in the East. Let's see. Any teams squeak in? They do not. Top 16 all have made it. And last NHL, the Washington Capitals with 55 points. Goals four here. Minnesota first, 346. We're fifth. Goals against here. New York Rangers are the best. We were the second best. So yeah, we're a very good team. I do want to take a quick look at the AHL standings because I think 138 points. Wow. 
Win percentage there, 84. We went 67, 11, and 4. Our AHL team is insane. So it would be really cool if both teams could win championships this year. We'll see. I think in the first round of the playoffs, we're going to have a wild card team because we did win our division. So that's good. And we have the Edmonton Oilers. Wow. Maybe that's not good. The team that knocked us out last year, the defending Stanley Cup champs, that's who we get in first round after winning the division. Dry Sal McDavid Savoy. Just their three big boys all in the top line. Yeah, Motto, Vidicek, Nugent Hopkins. They got a, actually, wow, that fourth line, all 70s. That's going to help us out. They definitely lost some depth. Nurse, D'Angelo, Bear, Bean, Butcher, Nunavera. Murray's their starter, copy backing him up. And they had Ukapek Lekkinen last year. I guess he was just a rental at the trade deadline. So, Oilers are definitely looking worse. Hopefully, we can take him out. So, first two games here in Arizona. And we get a 4 2 loss, followed up, though, with a big 8 2 win. Next two games in Edmonton. 6-0 win, 5-2 loss. All right, best of three now. Series is tied 2-2. We get a win there, 3-2. Can we move on in game six? <laughs> oh my gosh, same story, game seven. Come on, boys, get your revenge. 3-1, Crosby, Clinch, Geeky, Yamato for them. 5-1, Clinch and Matthews. And Drysdale adds one, too little, too late. 5-2 win. We do get the revenge there on the Defending Cup champs, moving on to the second round. And I feel like we saw this one coming, guys. In the second round with the Chicago Blackhawks, we finished fourth in the NHL, second in the West. Fiala, Doc, Debrink, it's a nasty first line. Kane there, even though he's an 83. Yeah, still awesome offensive stats. Somebody to Crosby, Bergeron. Reichel, uh, Pustin in there, Kraus. Oh, wow, he, he spoils us again. Cody Glass up to an 87. Hosang there in the NHL. Vander Kane, Lawton, not a bad fourth line. Theodore, Seth Jones. Winkler, Matheson, Schneider, Carey. So they lost uh, Caleb Jones, the brother. Peterson, Ingram, not too bad a goalie duo. I mean, they're, they're a pretty solid team. I definitely like ours better. Crosby there, I don't know if you guys saw, 15 points in seven games. He's averaging over two points per game right now in the playoffs. Jeez, this guy is such a legend. So, first two games at home against Chicago. We get a 7-1 loss and a 5-4 OT loss. That's not good at all. Heading to Chicago, 4-3 win. We gotta win this next one to tie the series up. 4-3 loss, wow. So we have to win these next three games straight. Come on, boys. 2-2, Funk and O'Reilly came to bring it for them. 3-2, Crosby. 4-3, Matthews with the game winner. There we go, Matthews wants another cup, playing for his hometown team. Hopefully we can go back to back here. It's our only way to move on. Game number six in Chicago. Up to nothing, Funk and Keller. 3-1, Keller again, Kane for them. 4-1, Crosby keeps it up. Let's go. Game 7, we've got all the momentum here. Come on, boys, find a way. Let's win this thing. At home in Arizona, first period, they're up 2-0. Fiala to bring it. 3-0, 4-1. Are you kidding me? We had all that momentum. I thought for sure we are going to win that Game 7. Chicago spoils us. So this team keeps getting back to the playoffs, but other than that one cup run, no luck. Crosby there, 22 points in his playoff run. That's just insane. AHL team, after having such a dominant regular season, looks to have lost in the first round, and they did. Five games there to the Ontario Reign. I can't believe that. And the draft players all terrain, guys. Vegas jumps up from 10 to 1, which I think is the highest you can jump. Maybe 11 to 1. That's nuts. And Washington there looks to have won the second round pick. You guys might notice there, Wilkes Bear Scranton Penguins. Back to back to back, Calder Cup champs. I wish we could play them one year in the final because we're insane in the regular season. They're insane in the playoffs. It'll be a really cool matchup. NHL there, Montreal Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. And we get to look at the retired players next year. Nick Backstrom hangs them up over a point per game for him. That's nuts. I don't see Crosby or Bergeron again. These two guys refuse to quit until they win another Stanley Cup. I respect it. Panarin there, 1,000 games played for an undrafted player over a point per game. He actually retired on top, too. was still a 90. Gallagher, Petrangelo, Kadri, Kuznetsov, Riley Smith had a 1,000 games. Andre Palat, Tyson Berry. I guess never getting injured is going to help a lot of these guys out. Ekman Larson, Henrique, Nelson, Rust. I mean, I don't see O'Reilly either, so we could bring back all the vets. That sucks. Kevin Hayes retired at 36. So we basically... Who do we get him from? I don't... Was it Philly? Because we just gifted them a second and two-fourths, but... It wasn't our fault. Like, we literally had 2.5 million in cap space. He had a 1.7 cap hit, and we couldn't call him up. Uh, Kerry Price here. That's a big retirement. Darcy Kemper, Freddie Anderson, Jake Allen there, Antti Ranta, David Riddick, all these guys 
uh, free agent goalies. And now we'll take a look at the playoff tree here, guys. Montreal went through the Leafs in five, Panthers in five, Flyers in five, Sharks in five. Never played more than five games. Very impressive. Sharks beat the Stars in seven, swept the Ducks and the Blackhawks before losing their Canadians in five. Look at the awards here. Montreal, of course, Stanley Cup. I'll take a look at the individual, Bedard, Art Ross, and the Hart. Very cool to see that. Adam Fox there was the James Norris, Debrinkit, Lady Bing, Pinelli there, Calder, Suzuki, Con Smythe. Andre did win the Vesna. Very, very cool. Um, Shashurkin there, though, got the lead on Jennings. Carlo, Bill Mastern on Seattle. Dallas coach, Jack Adams. Barkov, Selkie. Bedard also won Ted Lindsay. And then Debrinkit there, Marisha Shard. I always forget uh, sometimes to sort goals there in the NHL. HL team, that's insane. Wilkes Bears Grand Penguin, back to back to back, Calder Cup champs. Uh, we won the regular season, of course. We also won our division and conference in the regular season, but first round exit in the playoffs is just insane. I, I don't understand how that happened. Hagel here, most points in the AHL. Nybeck, though, got MVP. Very cool. We signed him for free. Emin in there, four times in a row, most goals. I maybe have to go make a trade for this guy and put him on our AHL team because that's nuts. Uh, Rask, best rookie. Evans, their best D-man. That's awesome. Dawes, best goalie. Like, our AHL team did everything. Anderson Dolan, though, MVP there for the Calder Cup. Hagel, sportsmanship. Clef bomb, community involvement. Not Oscar. And then Dawes, their lowest goals again. So, yeah, maybe we go try and make a trade for Eminem there just to make our AHL team even better. And we're at the draft here, guys. And look at this. Smolinski, first overall projected. Franchise potential. Similar style. Timu Solani. Uh, we'll take a look at the gems. They're probably all going to be high-ranked guys. There is one there, 69 goalie, which we don't really need, but I'll, I'll pin it just in case. Now, rank 53 and 131. These two guys have a good chance to be medium elite. That'd be an amazing steal. Now, next year, guys, when I see the Maple Leafs, will give us a third round pick for the rights to Ryan O'Reilly. Obviously, really good player, but I always saw him as a rental, as especially with Crosby not retiring. We really don't need him. Uh, if you guys look at our forwards there, those three could be on the first line, all 90 pluses. Funk, Keller, DeMarchi could be like a second line. Carlson, Gunther, Crosby could be a third line. Really, Crosby will be in the top six, even though he's 82. I mean, 81 points last year was our best playoff player. The, the overall doesn't do him justice. He's just so, so good still. And then we could have Holloway, somebody, and Bergeron on the fourth line. Bergeron's down to like a 76, but obviously not going to let him go. He's, he's still just such a good like fourth line player with the defensive stats and the poise. So we'll see if the Maple Leafs say yes to this. And they do. So kind of, you know, softens the blow there of losing Kevin Hayes for nothing. But our first pick in this draft isn't until pick number 39, which early second round um, after the franchise guy went, who's 83, 81 medium elite, 65 high top six for the Red Wings. I feel like I'd rather an 80 medium elite than a 65 high top six. So uh, they definitely messed up there. Now with our pick, we can get a guaranteed medium top four defenseman. He's the highest ranked guy we have pinned. Uh, one year NHL ETA is really good, similar style PK Subban. Holler here, let's take him. And 75 overall, medium top four. That's so good for an 18 year old, especially early second round. Like, what a great pick. Our next highest pin guy is Vincent Matthew, 50 50 medium elite goalie who's a gem. Or we could go Lovejoy, he's probably a low elite. I feel like oh, we gotta go with the goalie who's a gem because he's probably medium elite. And he is only 47 overall, but still not a bad pick. And now have a third round pick here. Guaranteed low top four in Corso. Let's see if we can get better than that. Sundin, pretty good chance to be low elite. Corso Heroes NHL ETA three years, so let's take him. Hopefully, decent rating. 63 low top four for the end of the third. Honestly, happy with that. Uh, Nashville here wants our 91st pick for a fourth and a sixth. I'm going to say no. Uh, I had a lot of guys pan. I think I'm going to start drafting them soon. So let's see here. Yeah, lots of guys. And the next one to go, I guess, would be Sundin, who's ranked there as 90. Pretty sure he's low elite. And he's a low top six, 64, not too bad. Now picking it into the fourth round again, just gonna look at our pins. I guess Sweetland here is next to go. Probably medium elite. Come on, Caden. Medium top six, again, not too bad. We actually have back to back picks here. Funny kind of how often that happens. So I'm just gonna pick the guy who's highest ranked. That'd be Pakarain in here, who's probably medium top six. No one else is guaranteed. Let's take him from Finland. And medium top six he is, only 51, but not bad. We guaranteed low top six defenseman Rasmussen there, who's American, but we could take a couple low top six forwards, or we could take a chance on two guys 50-50 medium elite. Let's do that. Zaitsev from the Ukraine, maybe no one scouted him enough. Medium top six, okay, still really can't complain. Fred's here again trying to trade up with us. I'm going to say no, because I want to make sure we get as many of these panda guys as I can. There's quite a bit. Siemens is next ranked here. All right, we'll take a chance on him. Low top nine, that kind of sucks. And our next pick here, number 27 in the seventh round. 
So you missed out on a couple more pins. I think they're all gone now, actually. Vorobev here might be medium elite. Medium six defenseman for the end of the seventh. That's actually really good. As you can see, we made a ton of picks there. Overall, pretty happy with that draft. So we're now at the resign phase, guys, and this is insane. We've got 37 million in cap space. I just realized the reason we have so much, uh, where is our guy? Internal cap needs a new contract. So we've only got three more years. So we'll just do three years there on a one way. And because the cap has gone up a good amount, I'm gonna make the salary now 11 million. So during the summer, I think 11 million counts for 11, but then during the season when he's buried, it only counts for 10 or 9, 5, whatever the game does. So there we go. We really have 26 million in cap space. I'm um, looking at our goalies here. Andre and Allenfeld both locked up. Um, Riss Miller, 2174, medium elite. Dawes is 27 now. He just won the AHL award and everything, but I'm thinking we let our medium elite goalies play in the AHL. Like, they're both pretty good, so we just get them signed. Hopefully, you know, they turn out well for us. 2169, high fringe starter. That's actually pretty good there for Anderson. Um, hopefully, we have enough goalie contracts. I believe it's six, and we just offered seven, so we actually might not have enough. Now, with our 26 million, Clayton Keller is the best player after we sign. He wants 10 million as an 87. Wow, so 7 million was getting him really cheap. I mean, we couldn't pay him that. Crosby there, I'm obviously going to keep. He wants 4-7. Uh, let's see if he'll go 4-2. I feel like at this point, come on, Sid. Give us a better deal than that. Holloway here. That's pretty good. And he's obviously a really solid fourth liner. I'd like to get him more minutes. It's just tough. Um, McConnell Barker here could be a fourth liner for us. I think I like this one-year 900k deal. See how he does. Obviously, too, I mentioned we're bringing Bergeron back, even though he's 76. He wants 2 million bucks. You're 76 years old. I know you're like decent. Law for 1.75. And now looking at the defense here, Valimaki needs a new contract. Wants six. For an 86, that's actually really good. Now, it doesn't get any cheaper, so we'll give him exactly, or actually it gets slightly cheaper at five. Um, so we'll give him exactly the years he wants, five years. Maybe 5.8, we're actually saving money. Morrissey depends on the price. Five million for 83, I'm gonna say no to that. Didn't really help us out too much. Vince Dunn, I was hoping we'd ask for another like crazy cheap deal like he did last year. We're going to have to hopefully find that in free agency. Evans could be a bomb pair guy for us. Same goes for Kulia Chonic, especially 800k. Might as well risk it. And there we go, guys. Bergeron actually did come back at a little bit cheaper, 1.8. Valimaki said yes. Holloway said yes. Internal cap, of course, he's taking 11 million. Crosby wants a bit more money. Um, Rissa Miller there, our goalie, said yes. Same with Kulia Chonic, McConnell Barker, um, Anderson there. Roster is full. He's the guy with high fringe, so not the end of the world. I guess, you know, that is one of the... Other downsides of having internal cap, uh, takes up a contract spot on top of the contract. I mean, 2169, like, high frame, it's not the end of the world that we're losing him. And we still have 22 million in cap space here, so Crosby will offer 4.52, I'm almost guaranteeing he'll say yes. We definitely can sign Clayton Keller, it's just, I don't know if he's worth the money he's asking for. He's really good, 10 million, just so much money. Um, we'll see if he does three years at nine. It's a lot of money still, but I'm probably fine with it because I don't know if we're going to get a better player than him in free agency for that price. Wow, Clayton Keller rejects, wants to test free agency. Some more money could change my mind. Crosby's back. As much as I want to keep Keller in OG, Arizona Coyote, he's not interested in an extension. He wants to test free agency. We have $18 million right now and no one to resign other than the AHL players. Like, we can go grab a superstar. Um, is that superstar going to be a defenseman? Probably. I think that would help us out the best. Um, although we still have 6 plus 80 defensemen, and after that, of course, you know, the forward group, even without Keller, I guess could sign someone to bring in for Keller. Keller was down 85, March 85, Funk 87, Geeky's a 90 now. Like, we're looking pretty good. I'm probably just going to sign best player available in free agency just to make our team, hopefully, you know, Stanley Cup contenders. All right, guys, so it's now the first day of free agency. Very curious to see who's available because we have some money. Cole Coffill at 93, we could go after him. Yo, Kim Kamel, I know you guys would love that one. Cider's actually available. I said we needed a defenseman. I thought we'll maybe train for him at the deadline. It costs too much. We can get him for free now. Wow, that could be the player that would really, you know, change this team. Zach Rowenski's also available. I mean, him or Cider. I think his checkers left-handed. Same with Clinch. We, we could really use a right-handed guy like Cider. Um, this Vokun dude, I think it's an RFA he is. Havlid there, 92, franchise potential. Timu Meyer, Brady Kachuk. Clayton Keller, wow, really, really good players available. Um, goal training wise, I'm just curious. Askarov there looks to be the highest rated goalie. Luckily, kind of our goalies are set. Gustafson there, 84 overall, only wanting 1.8. It's a very, very good value. Take a look at potential two-way guys. We don't have you know any contract spots, and luckily uh, there's no one good there. 
I guess we'll take a look at the two-way players first, in case there's somebody good. Ovechkin, I like the name, 2479 low elite. Um, I like kind of everything about this dude. Definitely gonna give him a contract offer. Looking at the other defenseman here, honestly, no one jumping out to me as that great. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna leave that alone. Forward-wise, Siglet, 2472. He's pretty much proven to be a bust at that point. Stan Coben is actually UFA this time. We wanted him last time. I will take him two years, 850k. Hopefully he says yes. Brain Tracy here as well. He's 27, so done growing, but he's an 81. Pretty good offensive stats. He's quick. Um, defensive stats aren't the greatest, but put him in the AHL. I think he could be a beast for us. We'll do a two-year deal. I think that's you know not, not really too risky. 150k. And I just noticed, guys, Zach Renski's actually one overall higher than Cider. And you can see he had 56 points last year, 27 minutes of ice time. Sider had 41 points, also 27 minutes, minus 27 on a bad Detroit team. Alright guys, I was thinking about it a lot, and I honestly think Rowenski might be the play. There's four teams interested, and I think that's because Sider costs almost $2 million more, one overall less. Now he is three years younger, but we only need him for three more years, so Rowenski might be better for us. Now if we missed out on him, could go for Sider if he's still there, or even Dougie Hamilton, 89 overall, would be a great pick. So Rowenski here. We're going to have to pay Sider more than he asked for anyways, too. Uh, we'll offer Rensky 12-5 for seven years, exactly what he wants. We'll see what he says. Now, I also want to go after a forward, and I was looking around six, seven million dollar range. You can see Drake Bath's in there. Tarasenko, though, right below him. I mean, this guy had 65 points last year, 30 goals. He's still a shooter. Like, look at that shot. If you score goals, you win games. I want to go after Tarasenko first. We missed out on him. Then I'll try and see maybe Bathson, Bertuzzi or even go down to like Josh Norris. So Terry Sanko, we're gonna offer him seven million for one year, see what he says. Some big offers out there. First time in a while we actually have some money to spend. It's a lot more fun in free agency when you can actually spend money. So here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm worried what's gonna happen. Brian Tracy there, if we get a good HL player, maybe a fourth liner, Stan Kovins, kind of same thing. Ovechkin, solid HL defenseman. Wierenski does say yes. Wow, I didn't know if that was gonna be enough money. I guess the other teams all lowballed him, maybe didn't give him the seven years. Tarasenko went with the Philadelphia Flyers, okay. Again, it was tough choosing between him and Sider, but I figured we got Rensky for 12-5. I think Sider was asking 13-8, so it would have cost 14 million plus, which just seemed like too much money. We gotta go get another forward now. Tyler Bertuzzi, JT Miller, wow, 4.9 is 87. He can play wing, can play center. He might be a really good guy to take. And look at this, guys. Morgan Frost, 85 overall, only wants 2.3 million. Are you kidding me? I think, honestly, the play here would be to sign Morgan Frost for 2.3 for sure, then also sign JT Miller. We should have enough money to do that. Now, Miller wants 5 million on a one year deal. I'm going to offer him that. It's a bit safer. And then Frost, I think, will do 2.5 for one. Two years, he's at 2.4. So, yeah, hopefully, he'll actually sign this two year 2.5 deal. That'd be crazy value, like cheap forwards there. JT Miller though went to Pittsburgh Penguins. Morgan Frost though said yes, okay. Uh, a little degree and then a third. We don't need any more defensemen after signing Runsky. Which still like a forward though, we have 5.2 million to play with. John Tavares here, 37 years old, 83 overall. He had 46 points last year. He's still got a ton of X factors. Really good shot. He's just kind of slow like Crosby. Can we bring in all the vets, try and get them, you know, one last cup? I'm leaning towards Tavares here. Gives us three million in cap space as well to add somebody at the deadline. At 50%, you're adding like a six million dollar player. Plus, a lot of these guys are on one year deals, so we have a lot of flexibility. Especially since you gotta think Crosby, Bergeron are retiring sometime soon. Um, we'll offer 2.75 for John Tavares. See what he says. Decide to go with the Blue Jackets. Okay. Now looking around, guys, I found this Keegan Hope dude. 2285. Looks to be pretty solid. Awesome offensive stats there. Hands and shooting. Kind of slow, but other than that, like a pretty good player. I wonder what his one year ask would be. 4.7, so we could steal him here. I believe the Sharks are his current team. Even three years, 4.85. Works for us, since we're only, you know, need him for three more years. 5 million would cost us this year's second round pick. Yeah, let's put the pressure on and see what he says. All right, so he's accepting as of now. Hopefully the Sharks don't match that. I mean, it wasn't a huge, you know, overpair or anything, but you never know, they might be up against it. Uh, the Sharks have chosen not to match. Five million for a 22 year old 86 overall player, that's great value. I think team's probably set now. If we get some, even if we just get a little bit of growth during the summer, we're gonna be so nasty next year. So we're gonna start next season, guys. I'm gonna show you the team here. Very, very excited to see how this team's gonna do. We've got Matthews, Crosby, and Shane right in the first line, getting a plus five. 
No reason why, like, Wright and Matthews can't be 1-2 and two in scoring in the NHL. Matthews playing, like, 100. Wright playing, like, a 98. Basically, perfect playmaker there. 99 passing, puck control. Matthews, 99 wrist accuracy. Like, hopefully they feed off each other. Last year, they were split up. Even Crosby, they're an 80. He's going to be playing, like, an 85, which makes his playmaking stats all perfect. And aside from his skating and physical, still a very good player. Second line there, you got Gunther, Geeky, and Funk. They're getting a plus three. Third line's Hope, Carlson, Frost getting a plus one. Fourth line even, Holloway, Bergeron, Demarchi, really, really good. Demarchi's an 85 medium elite, but he just has nowhere else to go. Like, Hope here is a bit better offensively. You can see sick hands, better shot. Demarchi takes a bunch of penalties. Bergeron, 74 overall. We're basically just using him for his face-off and defensive stats. He can be playing fourth line center, as well as the PK. You can see the skating there, so, so low. But, I mean, the dude's 43. And you know what, guys? I actually just made a quick change to put Frost on the fourth line instead of Demarchi, because Demarchi is medium elite. Roll their third line score so he should still grow. And then Frost there, you know, again, just makes this fourth line so sick. Defensively, Rensky and Klins on the top pair get a plus three. So playing like a 95 and 92, just nuts. Soderstrom, Chikrin, so like the OG Arizona D pair. Valimaki, Kuliachonik. And goal, of course, Andre starting for us. Allen fell back in a mop. I mean, this team is looking really, really good. Speaking of like the original Arizona Coyotes, I think the only forward left is Gil and Gunther now. And of course, like the two D men I just mentioned. Kind of crazy, you know, the turnover with this team. I totally forgot to show you guys the AHL team. I think they're going to be nasty this year as well. Brain Tracy, Dante Lowry, Nybeck. Lowry here, now 22, still a 78. Put up 98 points last year, didn't grow. 73 in his 18-year-old season in the AHL. Like, I don't know why some people just don't grow. Zarian Stan Coven, both 80s on the second line. With Martinez, who has the perfect shot there. And really good hands outside of puck control. Lassard, McConnell Barker, Forster, even McConnell Barker there's an 80. Gunler, Vossenar, Pierce, like... They're so, so stacked. Defensively, we have three 80s on this HLD. Poirier, Ovechkin's an 80. Ottavine and Evans are both 80s. Deneen, Holler here. Holler, we just drafted 1875, me in top four. would like to see him grow. And I actually thought about putting Ovechkin in the NHL as 24 years old, low elite. Good defensive stats there, but we don't get the chemistry boost with him that we do with Kuliachonik. Um, also, too, in terms of the AHL, goaltending, just two medium league goalies, Inris Miller and Savage. Savage, though, younger and has X Doctor, so I'd like for him to kind of be the starter. I actually just noticed they're both 76, so uh, they'll probably split until one starts to grow more. Show you guys the ratings here as well. Again, I think both teams looking really good. And you gotta remember, our NHL team now, 11 million under the max salary cap, and I think we're actually 2.5 million in space still, so we're like 13 under. Um, Matthews, right, Wenski, there, you kidding me? So, 97 offense, 100 defense. I don't think I've ever had 100 defense before. And a 90 goaltending. Wow. I mean, too, we have Bergeron as our fourth line center. I'm not sure he's sending for overall. He probably doesn't affect the offensive stat too much, but imagine we bring in, like, an offensive superstar at the deadline. We get 100, 190. Like, Andre has to win the Vezina again this year with 100 defense in front of him. So, like I said, guys, very excited to see what happens next episode. If you enjoyed this one, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.